Are you headed to Las Vegas for the Waiter Talk and Sports Memo meet and greet? Well, we want to make your trip easier by discounting our three-day all-access packages to only $39 with no coupon needed. This offer is valid from Wednesday, August 17th through Sunday, August 21st, and is good at both Wager Talk and Sports Memo with no limit to how many handicappers you can lock up for $39 each. So if we're going to see you at the Westgate this weekend or not, enjoy this incredible three-day package special. That's right, get a three-day package from your favorite handicapper for the price of a one-day all-access. All right, welcome everybody to Wager Talk today. I'm Lawrence Presman. He's Teddy Covers, and you're watching the best daily sports betting show on the planet. Teddy, 3-0 and oh in the daily presidential address yesterday. Booyah, guys. Get to 100 likes. No negotiations today. Uh, we got a great show, dude. Steve Merrill joining us. He's going to talk Rays and Yankees, Rockies and Cardinals. A recently engaged Adam Trigger, who I haven't spoken to about that yet. Uh, he'll be talking about how he proposed to his beautiful uh, future wife, Mallory, and the Nationals and the Cubs and the Brewers and the Dodgers. And of course, the man, Art DeCesar. Brother, I went 3-0 and in the Daily Presidential Address. I went 2-1 and for my clients yesterday. It was a great day all around and yourself, my brother. Well, you had a better night than I, Prez, unfortunately. Ah. But, of course, I call it $2 Tuesday even when it's 3 for $5 at Sports Memo. It's just uh, the branding. You guys know what I mean. Uh, I made, obviously, a ton of sales being the $2 Tuesday capper at Sports Memo yesterday, one of the three $2 Tuesday cappers yesterday. And I got the cards on the run line. But first of all, all day, everybody likes it, which is, <laughs> you're like, oh, crap. Here's a big favorite that everybody likes. The money's pouring in. And all the recreational shops catering to Joe's, it's just Cardinals money, Cardinals money, Cardinals. Money. So the cards get the bases loaded in the first, and they don't score. And the scoreless to the fourth card hit a solo shot. Goldie hits a two-run bob in the fifth. It's 3 nothing after five, and Jose Quintana hasn't allowed a hit yet. So far, so good. Before the game, obviously before the I released a play, I had a first five versus full game discussion with myself. Which is the better bet? I wanted to bet against Colorado's bullpen. I wanted to bet against the Rockies actually winning against a good team on the road. And I made the decision. Full game run line at even money, plus 100, or I think it was plus 102, versus first five, minus a half. You had to lay minus 150, minus 160. I said the full game is the better bet. And I got the game right where I want it. I got a three-run lead, an ace on the hill, a bet against bullpen versus a solid bullpen. All good. Then Quintana tires, four straight singles, it leads down to one. And the Cards bullpen falters, St. Louis down four to three. But the Rockies pen does what they're supposed to do. Cardinals tie the game. I thought Goldie might have hit a three-run bomb, but it ended up being a sack fly. Ugh, brutal. Tied at four. Eighth inning, one, two, three, one, two, three, both sides. Rockies go down one, two, three in the ninth. The Cards pen's doing what they're supposed to do, Prez. Bottom nine, the Rockies pen did what they're supposed to do. Complete meltdown. Lamette came in, walk, walk, bunt, single, hit by pitch, game over. Cards win by one. Arg, You know, you're laying one and a half. The handicap was more right than wrong, but... Doesn't matter. Didn't cash. <laughs> so I didn't win an MLB on Monday. I didn't win an MLB play on Tuesday. My free play was a disaster yesterday with the Yanks. Today's card, nothing jumped at me. So I'm passing MLB today. We'll live to fight another day, Prez. No fun in Mudville last night, unfortunately, for myself or my clients. Hey, Teddy, listen, I lost on that St. Louis game, too. That was my only loser. I had the under. Ah, uh, bro, I don't want to kick you when you're down, but let's talk the Atlanta Braves-New York Mets series. You came on Monday. You spoke about how hot the Mets were. You talked about how uh, fading Atlanta in this series might be a good idea. Uh, two thorough destructions by the Braves today. Uh, does it flip around? We've got still two games left in that series. Well, Scherzer goes today, and I'm in no rush to bet against Max Scherzer and neither of the markets because this is the only one of the three games in the series that Atlanta has not been favored. So uh, markets are telling you the Mets might well be the right side today. I did not play that game. I did not play anything in baseball today. You know, I had two back-to-back -back days where I just didn't see things right. Take a pass. Don't burn your bankroll. We'll come back tomorrow. Hopefully we'll see things cleaner. And that gives me a chance today to really dig into some NFL preseason week two action, including a big game breakdown 
for Sunday Night Football a little bit later in the show. Dude, it's funny. You know, I put my plays up before the show starts 90% of the time, and I have so much respect for you and all the guys that come on. You know, Monday I put up my 4% play. It's on Atlanta. And then you come on in your big game breakdown and destroy my play, and it's like, oh, shit. Uh, and then you win so, 13 to 1. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a weird it's, position, it's okay though. If my you analysis play, is wrong <laughs> and your play wins. Yeah, but it's like it's a weird situation because you put your play up, you make your bets, you release your stuff to your clients, and then Steve Merrill comes on and tells you why you're wrong. Uh, so, Steve, <laughs> uh, how are you, my brother? You, are you in Vegas yet? I've been in Vegas, man. And, uh, Teddy, I went to an Aces game on Sunday, saw the regular season finale, my first WNBA game, and it turned out it was a record crowd, 10,000 people. I'll tell you what, guys, it was a hell of an atmosphere. And as you know, I've coached an 0-10 middle school Lady Spiders, so I've got a little respect for women's basketball nowadays. But, um, boy, what's the over-under on an NBA team here, Teddy? It's a no-brainer. I mean, they were supporting them like it was a pro basketball NBA Finals. Uh, Playoffs tonight, I might try to go to the game tonight. Uh, Pretty good atmosphere. Well, there were – just real quick, Lawrence. There were were reports all over about how the Aces weren't – prepared for the crowd that they got on Sunday because uh, they don't normally draw 10,000 fans on a daily basis. So the lines were backed up. Everything was backed up uh, throughout Mandalay Bay. Did you see that? Because that was all over Twitter. I know that. Yeah. In fact, that's my favorite story about the game. We get there about 10 minutes before it starts, and you walk through Mandalay, obviously, to get in. The arena's attached, and there's a line of about 50, 60 people to get into the arena. We're like, wow. So we walk to the end of that line, and then we realize it goes around the corner, and we're like, wow. And then it goes around the next corner. It might have been like a 1,000 people. But it never stopped moving, Teddy. And we literally got in in about 10 minutes. It was as smooth as I've ever been. I mean, it was the smoothest 1,000-person line. It never stopped moving. And um, everything about the game was fantastic, a state-of-the-art arena. You know, I was debating between going to the preseason Raider game Sunday. And I was like, man, I really hate preseason football. Um, so I made the right choice. And I might go do that tour of Allegiant. Have you done that, uh, the tour of the stadium? I'm trying to figure out if that's worth doing. I have not done it, so I cannot give you a recommendation. But I ain't paying to go to a tour of a stadium, dude. No, no, Teddy. Well, I, ain't to go to pre- I ain't paying no. to go to a preseason game either, I figured. So it was a tough Teddy. call. <laughs> Teddy, man, if you, I, I paid to go on a tour through Fenway Park, and it was worth every bloody cent. Uh, so I, don't, I, I disagree with you. I mean, there's, I pay to go through uh, Chicago Cubs Stadium anyway. Steve, I got a question really? for you. I'm curious because I love Bill Burr. He's my second favorite comedian of all time. He just released a piece, uh, a new uh, a new piece on uh, Netflix. And he talks about the WNBA and he's like, you women, you, you want equal pay. You don't even show up to the damn games. So my cur- what I want to know is, was it was there more females watching the WNBA than when you go to the college games or the NBA games? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I, you know, that's a good question, Prez. I go to a ton of, obviously, men's college basketball. Um, I think there was definitely more of a family atmosphere, but then again, it was a Sunday afternoon. But, yeah, I saw a lot of women with, like, jerseys on, you know, Aces jerseys, which is kind of different, I guess. And um, I will say this. Hey, look. I've started to follow women's basketball a little more recently. Uh, the shooting was fantastic. It was a 100-9 to 9 to 100 game. The game went over the total with eight minutes to go. Um, so wow. obviously that wasn't the normal. And they're two of the best three-point shooting teams in the league. It was Sue Bird's final game with Seattle, another reason I wanted to see it. Um, but I looked at some stats the other night looking at the playoff games. They shoot as well, if not slightly better, Teddy, than the NBA on uh, uh, free throws. Both teams tonight, the Aces game, like 82%. Um, you know, so high 70s, low 80s. So – it's a below the rim. That's always been my negative. You know, it's not a high fly, you know, jamboree. But yeah. the shooting and skill level is as good, if not better. And I've started to appreciate that. And I'll tell you what, um, this was high-level basketball. It was very fast-paced. I think they hit like 38 threes combined. And uh, it was a cool atmosphere. I was definitely impressed with the uh, Las Vegas Aces. Well, let's get to it, brother. We got two baseball games we're going to discuss today. The first, the Rays and the Yankees. The Yankees are on a free fall, but nobody can seem to take advantage of it. Uh, They've lost their last two games to this very Tampa Bay team. And now we've got uh, Tampa Bay as a, uh, well, Yankees minus 135, uh, eight and a half, eight on the mound. Uh, What are you doing? 
Yeah, I'll tell you who has taken advantage of it, Prez. It's been betters if they've been fading the Yankees, right? Uh, New York yeah. has the fourth worst record in baseball over the past month, basically. And yet, as you said, they're still t- nine games ahead of the Rays yeah. now because they lost last night. They're still ten ahead of your Blue Jays who have not taken advantage. The Blue Jays have lost eight of the last ten, just like the Yankees. That's the team that's really missed an opportunity. You know, we, we talked about the Yankees over a month ago, that they would be a fade at some point. They would regress. Um, they've regressed, and they're still um, – 27 games above 500 for the season. Look, the key for them is they're going to win this division still. They're still like 1-30 to 30 in the betting odds. Um, and the bigger thing is they have to finish second among the division winners, and they're still 10 games ahead of Cleveland um, in the Central. So they're going to get that first round by. They're 10 ahead of the Central right now. Um, so I don't think, see anything changing right now. I don't see any urgency all of a sudden. I'm not sure you can just flip a switch. Meanwhile, the Rays are just one game up now for the wild card after winning yesterday. Tampa is playing better baseball. They've won four straight. Uh, Yankees, meanwhile, as I said, have lost eight out of ten, fourth worst record in baseball the past few weeks. Um, and the reason's been the offense. Uh, they always live by the big hits, obviously. It's kind of like living by the three-pointer in basketball, and they're not hitting the ball well. They've had single-digit hits now in seven straight games. They've lost six of those last seven. In fact, they've had seven hits or less in six of those last seven games, including just four hits and a 3-1 loss last night. Not going to over to one. I would definitely uh, lean raise, but I also like the under in this game. In fact, I like the under a little bit more if you're going to play it. I think uh, under eight and a half is a nice number. I lean raise under eight and a half would be my top recommendation. Yeah, I mean, certainly when we're talking about a Yankees team that has cost everyone money. And yesterday I came on, Steve, and I did my big game break. And I said, normally I like to ride hot teams and fade cold teams. And I swear every time I say that or write that, like I should have just done what I did normally, which is not (laughs) – Ride hot teams and fade cold teams, but um, and I feel like three or four times, like uh, uh, when that particular phrase comes out of my mouth, my, uh, it's like okay, that should be enough to send my play to the trash can, and not actually bet it, uh, because we like to ride hot teams and fade cold teams. We know the Yankees are ice cold. Okay, they're not hit. The only one on the team that can hit right now is Judge, uh, literally. And I mean, you go up and down that lineup, you're not afraid of anyone except Aaron Judge. My question for you is about Tampa. One, is Kluber good enough? Two, are the Rays good enough to go in the, in the Bronx and sweep them? Well, I mean, Tampa is a team that I think is underachieved this year. You know, obviously they're capable of winning this whole pennant, and they've been some injuries, they've been shorthanded. They're also a team that kind of lives and dies a little bit by the long ball over the years. So, you know, anything could happen in one MLB game, but this is a big picture thing for me. I'm not going to try to catch that falling knife. Um, with the Yankees. And at the Rays, you know, what will be interesting to me about the Rays is after this three-game series, they have four at home against Kansas City and then three against a bad Angels team. Um, so Tampa could make a move in this division over the next few weeks because the Yankees have Toronto for four games after this. So for me, it's going to be very interesting to see if the Yankees can flip a switch and get back on track. I don't think it happens tonight. But once again, I'd lean Rays. I think the best play, Teddy, is the under. Um, I think it's harder to flip a switch offensively. And Tampa, real quick, offensively has not been that great either. Uh, they win last night 3-1, but they only had four hits as well. They've yeah. had eight hits or less now in like something like six of their last seven. So two pretty cold offenses in this game. Yeah, and that's why you like the under as well. Chris L. writes, Yankees are a beer league softball team that can't win without hitting home runs. Chris L., you're smarter than that. Uh, anyway, Rockies at Cardinals. Steve Merrill, Montgomery versus Marquez, minus 200, 210. There's a 195 on the board. It's all over the place. Total of seven, which is interesting. Uh, they don't think uh, they don't think Colorado's going to score much tonight, I guess. Uh, where are you going in this game? Yeah, I wouldn't disagree. I mean, I'm going to lean Cardinals in this one, um, and I agree with Colorado probably not scoring much. You know, I always talk about stats in offense and baseball that you have to look at road-only stats, especially now that these teams have played, you know, over 110 games. They both have played about, you know, 60 home, 60 away for the most part. And the Rockies are the extreme textbook example of why you look at road stats, and we all know why, of course, because they play in the most offensive friendly ballpark in baseball history with the thin air and altitude of course field and that altitude of Denver Colorado but just to put it in perspective you look at let's just say OPS that's on base plus slugging it's a good overall metric of offensive production uh, Rockies number one home OPS this year out of all 30 teams we go to the road uh, they're 26 out of 30th and they're a uh, bottom two or three in batting average on base different stats that you want to choose versus you know top two or three at home so 
this is not a good offensive team, even though their overall offensive stats are very mediocre. And uh, this is a team, obviously, that doesn't perform well on the road. They're 18 and 37 away this year. Uh, but my car- takeaway on this is the Cardinals. We talk about the Yankees not playing well. The Cardinals are the opposite. Cardinals are playing good baseball. In fact, last night on Tuesday, only one of the six division winners won a game, and that was St. Louis. The other five division winners, including the Yankees, uh, Astros, Dodgers, all have huge leads, all lost. Um, so this is a St. Louis team that's still playing hard. Uh, they're in good current form. So the question is, you know, and as Teddy has t- pointed out a lot of times, Ralph Michaels as well, you know, these $2 favorites have been automatic winners for a couple of years now in baseball. I prefer to lay the run line, though. I'm not going to lay the $2 price here with the Cardinals. They're currently minus 200 pretty much across the board. I'd rather get it down on the run line and actually get plus money, minus one and a half, plus 105. So I have no problem fading the Rockies. I have no problem backing the Cardinals, who are in first place ahead of the Brewers in that central division. So uh, my three for five dollars slash two dollar Tuesday play yesterday uh, was on St. Louis on the run line, and I certainly looked at the cards on the run line again today because I didn't want to lay the two dollar price. But with a total of seven, and yeah. with St. Louis, I mean they hit, but they're not a tear the cover off the team type of offense. And when you look at Herman Marquez, you talk about the issues with Colorado at home versus on the road. Well, Marquez. Way better on the highway than he's been at Coors this year. Uh, 224 batting average against versus 307, uh, just for one statistical metric to talk about. So given all of those factors, Marquez has been better on the highway. Cards aren't putting up runs in bunches. This total sitting over at seven. Is the run line the way to get at this? Is it a first five scenario the way to get at this? Is this uh, Because it feels like laying a run and a half for the total of seven and a decent pitcher, opposing pitcher on the hill, that can get a little dicey. Certainly got dicey for me yesterday. Yeah, and Teddy, look, you know, you and I obviously take a long-term perspective. That was the only time the last nine games that the Cardinals won by exactly one, you know, and unfortunately it happened last night for you. Um, They did have some one-run wins a couple weeks ago, so I don't disagree. They're not like the Dodgers um, who were just a smash it, lay the run and a half, you know. In fact, Dodgers won those 12 straight going into this past Sunday when they finally lost. All 12 wins have been by two runs or more, and we've talked about that for years here on the show. So it's not quite as, you know, as safe of a play, but Long term, I'd rather get the plus 105 tonight and have them win by two or more than lay one to two. What you could, of course, do is something Dave Koken talks about a lot is play half a unit on pick them, half a unit minus one and a half. And I guess that would get you, what, minus 150, minus 145, and minus one. Um, that's probably the nice little happy compromise. Steve Merrill, everybody. And Steve will be at the meet and greet in Las Vegas Guys, we'll see you at 5 p.m. on Saturday at the Westgate Sportsbook. Steve, you brought your entire family down, dude. That that does not sound like a vacation. Yeah, Prez is so jealous, Teddy. He said that like four times over the past few weeks. It's been a great trip, yeah. man. And uh, you'll have to yeah. pay you'll have to pay extra to see the family at the meeting greet, though. They're not included in that package, folks. That's a bonus. That's in the VIP room. Yeah, clearly, yeah. clearly Prez doesn't like hanging out with his kids. <laughs> That's all I can think no, of. No, I, kind of I go on vacation. Like, I feel worse when I go on vacation without Isaac than I go on with him, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I feel yeah. a lot better hanging out with my boy. Except I think the Oxford Dictionary definition of vacation is when you leave your children behind. Uh, it's, when, it's when you have fun. And technically, I'm not on vacation because I'm doing a show and I've been in sports books every day and I'll be at the meeting greet. So <laughs> technically, it's... And I went to an Aces game. It's probably not really a vacation for me because I can't really get sports out of the equation or betting. Uh, There you go. Steve Merrill, everyone. Dude, you are absolutely rolling right now. Wait, bring him on. Bring him on. He's got got some promotions to do. Dude is on fire. 16 and 6 MLB best bet run. 57 and 35 MLB sides and totals last 70 days. Uh, just dominating, like always. Uh, what do you got for the clients? Yeah, as I was going to say, I don't like telling people I'm on vacation because they're going to run and not get my best bets, right? But it's we're not on vacation. We're doing work every day. Did the baseball show yesterday here on the network, doing this show with you guys, of course. And uh, back-to-back best bets winners on Monday and Tuesday night. Hit the free play as well yesterday. Don't forget to check out the free plays every day at wagertalk.com. And now the past two and a half weeks, 73% baseball, up 22 games the past 70 days and 92 and 63 all sports since May. Football is here. Don't forget about all sports packages. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Yeah, there you go. And UC Panda has it right, Teddy. 
Uh, he'd like to go on vacation with his kid, but leave the wife at home. <laughs> acceptable. Totally acceptable. Uh, Steve, get out of here, brother. Uh, Teddy, we do actually have a promotion going. It goes from today until Sunday. Uh, it's a three-day all-access to any handicapper you want at Wager Talk. It's only $39. That's $39 for three days of plays. Uh, so take advantage of that. There is no coupon required, and it is available till Sunday. And just a quick trick for you guys. Don't tell head office. If you buy like 10 of those packages, they stack up. So you can actually buy that three-day package for $39 like 50 times, and it'll just stack up for you. Let's take a quick break. Teddy's Big Game Breakdown, the newly engaged Adam Trigger and Art to Caesar. Are you headed to Las Vegas for the Wager Talk and Sports Memo meet and greet? Well, we want to make your trip easier by discounting our three-day all-access packages to only $39 with no coupon needed. This offer is valid from Wednesday, August 17th through Sunday, August 21st, and is good at both Wager Talk and Sports Memo with no limit to how many handicappers you can lock up for $39 each. So if we're going to see you at the Westgate this weekend or not, enjoy this incredible three-day package special. That's right, get a three-day package from your favorite handicapper for the price of a one-day all-access. It is time for today's big game breakdown. Let's talk a little NFL preseason action. Look, the baseball this week has not been good. We'll leave it aside uh, for today and focus on NFL preseason action. Let's talk Sunday night football. The Ravens and the Cardinals right now. Look at the Wager Talk live odds screen. I'm seeing Baltimore minus six, minus six and a half. There's even a minus seven out there on the Ravens. Steam on the under. Total has been bet down to 39, even some 38 and a halfs out there. Although if you shop around, you find a little bit better than that. And I'm not going to tell you guys to bet against Baltimore. I did that last week for myself and my clients with a team that didn't care that much. It was a value bet against the Ravens, and it wasn't fun. Arizona doesn't care about the W either. But make no mistake about it, after 21 consecutive preseason victories, the Baltimore bandwagon is ridiculously large. And you're not getting any value with this point spread supporting the Ravens. This is not a game I'm interested in the side at all. Arizona doesn't care about the W, and the price is way too high to bet on Baltimore. But the total is worth noting. And again, big move down yesterday, a couple of points. But we're still above the key number of 38. And... The Ravens won 21 preseason games in a row. All right, this total was sitting at 41 yesterday. During that 21-game preseason win streak, one of those games went over 41 points. This defense is real. First string, second string, third string. Arizona is coming to the table with the likes of Trace McSorley, who played well last week, and Jared uh, Guarantano. I don't expect to see a lot of starters on the field for the Cardinals. Kingsbury, again, they put up a bunch of points last week. But I don't see that as predictive of what's going to happen this week. For the Ravens, Tyler Huntley came in and had a great game. And Anthony Brown behind him played uh, a great game. We're still not going to see Lamar Jackson here. We're not going to see Colt McCoy likely in this ballgame. It's going to be second, third, fourth string quarterbacks again. And last week, both these offenses worked reasonably well. I'm not convinced that's the case at all this time around. Baltimore and Arizona. Under the total is the way to look in this one. Let's get it now. We've already seen a lot of the value get chopped out of it. Get on board here before the rest of the value gets chopped out of it. Because I have my hunch is this line's not stopping moving at 38 and a half. It may well go lower because this does not look like an offensive juggernaut type of ball game. Ravens card, Sunday night football. Expect it to be boring and stay under the total. There's your big game break. 
Excellent stuff, Teddy Covers. Let's bring on Adam Trigger. Add uh, right off the bat. Congratulations on getting engaged. Uh, I hope it works out a lot better than mine did. Uh, how did you do it? It was pretty simple. Um, really, like, no one around. I didn't have any big elaborate plan. Uh, but we went to Burlington, Vermont all weekend. I met Prez. I managed to turn a – I went and played in a wiffle ball tournament and, and like, turned that into – also getting engaged. So that's just elite multitasking right there. Same week. Well, you done. did it at the exact same time, like while playing yeah. wiffle ball. Oh, oh, no. oh. Hey, Mel, no. want to get engaged? <laughs> no, it that was not. Would be it was multitasking. Not that, yeah, no, that well, would. Then I'm, but... not, I'm not giving you credit for multitasking, dude. <laughs> Sorry. That was not uh, multitasking in any form. Listen, I've met your fiance. She's wonderful. She's better than you in every way. So congratulations. <laughs> you should always shoot for the stars. Uh, Teddy, congratulate him. Bugger off. Just <laughs> congratulate him. Good. No, I will congratulate him when he actually gets married. Dude, yeah, everyone gets engaged. That's the easy part. The hard part is spending <laughs> the next year planning a wedding, getting everyone there, and still liking her by the time you actually say I do. So. Congratulations on the engagement, Adam. And I can't believe you dissed your ex-wife like that, Fred. She gave you two beautiful daughters. And you lived together 20 years her. mostly happily. I didn't diss her. I said, I hope it goes better than mine did. Mine is over. The marriage. <laughs> okay. huh. Anyway, Chuck Pod suggests I buy uh, Adam a blowjob chair for his wedding. Uh, Ad, that's not going <laughs> to happen. Uh, nationals yeah, I think, I think I would get come. shot down. <laughs> No, I, I think yeah. I think it, I think it would go well. I think it would go over well. Uh, Nationals and Cubs, bro. Let's go. How are we betting this game? Well, Prez, I, you know I know you love when I come on here and give out a game that's going to start in a half hour. But listen, I also yeah, know that not. you love when I come on here, come on here and give client plays. And the Nationals plus one and a half is a four percent play. So I figured I had to I had to come with it to the show here. Uh, you know, just looking at this series, right? Like these two teams will now be playing. Their sixth game over the course of the last maybe like 10 days. Uh, and and the, the series, in my opinion, has been competitive enough where the Nationals just can't be getting a free run here. I, I think that that is, is very skewed. You look at the last two nights, right? The Nationals win um, the first game of the series 5-4. to four. Last night, they lose 7-5 in, in 11 innings. So a really bad beat if you were on the plus one and a half in last night's game with the Nationals. I haven't been on it yet this series, but I'm going to jump in here. And really my whole sort of, of rationale is I, I look at these two teams and where they're at at this point in the season, and I just can't make the Cubs a minus one and a half favorite in this game, all things considered. You know, you got Drew Smiley. He's going for the Cubs today. Solid back-to-back -back starts, but the guy had a, a, an ERA over six in the month of July. Um, you know, and, and both of those starts were at home uh, where he's been better than he's been on the road. Nationals are going to go with the, actually a former Cubs prospect, Corey Abbott, second round pick of the Cubs in 2017. He hasn't done a ton in Major League Baseball so far. The numbers aren't great, but the sample size is small. The Cubs haven't seen him, so none of these players have really had to go up and, and face him. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping I can get some unfamiliarity out, out of him and, and get him through a couple innings here to get it to the bullpens, which seem, you know, roughly equal right now, as we know the Cubs, you know, they, they the, wholesale traded away their relievers. So if this gets into the later innings in a close game, I, I don't see the Cubs with a, a big advantage over the Nationals, big enough to justify laying a run and a half. Uh, Nelson Cruz finally hit a home run the other day for the first time since like mid-June. Uh, you know, if, if he gets hot, that could be huge for the Nationals down the stretch because he's given them nothing this year so far. It's pretty much his worst season since, uh, you know, in over a decade. So, uh, Guys, I just think the number's off here. Nationals plus one and a half is like minus 120, minus 125. I expect a close game. Won't be surprised if the Nats win. And if they lose, there's a very good chance it's by a run. So I think Nationals plus one and a half is a good bet, and it's a 4% play for me. So here's my question, and it's, and it's real simple. I mean, the, the Nationals' last 18 losses, 17 have come by more than one run. Um, so given that scenario... That they, you know, not once, not twice, but 17 of the last 18 defeats by more than one run. 
once you just want to ask them to win and, and take the plus price on that instead of laying some juice. So, Teddy, it's a, it's, I, I understand the argument from a numbers perspective, but what I don't, I'm not worried about the last 17 games because I didn't bet the last 17 games, or maybe I bet a couple of them, but, you know, it's not, it's, if I was betting this regularly, that's something I might take into account here. I'm just betting on today. And today, I prefer to have the run at low juice in a game that I expect to be close. I looked at the first two games of the series. They win, and they they lose a game by two last night that they really should not have been a two-run loss. I mean, you know, anytime a team loses by two in 11 innings, you have to put a little asterisk with the, you know, the ghost runner scenario at this point. So uh, with bad teams, I'm more comfortable with the plus one and a half. I like to take it when the juice, it, you know, is is lower than minus 125, and that's what I'm getting here. So rather than ask the Nationals to win, which has been an issue for them, if I can get the run in a game that I think they're equal, uh, I'm, I'm happy to go to battle with that. Cashed with the Reds right. earlier this week, 5% play in the same, you know, they lost the game by one run. So, you know, the numbers might come out one way in the long run, but I think if there's like sharp support for the side, you know, that that's the plus one and a half tends to be a good bet. Adam Trigger, everyone, exclusive Andy Capper at wagertalk.com. Adam, listen, Teddy's clearly not reading his slack, so no follow-up on this one. It's all you, Brewers and Dodgers. I was on the Brewers last night, one of my wins for my clients. Uh, what are we doing in this one? Prez, I was on the Brewers last night as well. My only, my only MLB play yesterday, 4% play, and, and it came through. And, and you know... I like the Brewers. So again, I would look to Brewers plus one and a half here, but I'm going to talk about just the Dodgers in general. This, I don't know if this will make my, my client card. I do lean Blue, Brewers plus one and a half. And, and here's sort of what I'm looking at with the Dodgers. Like there's a big narrative around the Dodgers that they're just going to win and win by margin because it's what they've done so far. But I think you need, I think it's a little bit skewed now because you have to think like this is a team that's going to be playing relatively meaningless games the rest of the way. And I think, you, you know, they see Walker Bueller go down for the year. Um, Clayton Kershaw is on the IL. And I have to imagine that the Dodgers are going to start prioritizing health over winning games from this point forward. Yeah. And, and I think that's going to make the Dodgers a little bit easier to fade, especially by margin, considering they're not going to, you know, like, for example, today, Gonsolin's going to get the ball. Uh, I can't really see them pushing him super deep. They've been a little bit conservative with his pitch count all season. You know, so I don't see him going more than five or six innings unless he's absolutely cruising. And you're not going to see them really tax the relievers because they're a deep team and, and and they just don't need to. You know, you're getting a run and a half at home with a playoff team, which is what the Brewers are, in my opinion. Uh, and it's a game they need to win. And then I look at Eric Lauer, uh, 3.64 ERA, 1.21 whip. He's been pretty good. And so, you know, I'll take, uh, you know, the Brewers get a little confidence last night with the win. Yelich finally busts out of his slump, goes two for four with a home run. I think that could be a big spark for a team that was hitting under 200, like since the beginning, beginning of August. And so all things considered, I just don't, the Brewers getting a run and a half at home in this game, in my opinion, because of those things, is excellent value. So the way I would look in this one is to come right back with the Brewers. I would take the plus one and a half. But I do think it's a game that I wouldn't be surprised if the Brewers come back and win again today. Awesome stuff, Adam Trigger, everyone. Uh, we're done. We, we got Art coming on. Art the Caesar joining us. Uh, outstanding work by Adam. Uh, Art, welcome to uh, the show, man. We love having you every Wednesday. And I have a quick question right off the bat. Um, imagine there's a guy standing in your sports book handing out free $100 bills, and no one shows up. That's how I feel right now art i hand i i do a daily presidential address every day the probably the scariest bets you at the counter at the westgate might be as they line up you're like anything but the daily presidential picks anything god no you didn't get advice from prez right no 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 and yet i can't even get to 100 likes come on okay i'm done how are you bro i'm good uh yeah prez that's we would have to, uh, yeah, we might have to close early on a day like that, avoid all the, you know, the rushes to the line and things of that nature. And I will say this, speaking of the sports book and you, I made it very clear to security last night 
You would be around all weekend. We have your oh, picture God. up. You know, we just we, we need people to be aware of who you are. And speaking of people, I saw the legend Carmine in the sports book last night. Gave him a nice wave. So people are already in town, really raring to go for a big weekend. Yeah, Art the Caesar, we're so excited to to be doing this and to be doing this at the Westgate. And Carmine is sending picture after picture of Miss Michigan, Miss Idaho, Miss Florida. Uh, you got the Miss Something contest going on down there? Couldn't you uh, organize it all at the same time? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We could have a, a dual meet and greet, I guess, right? Something of that nature. But yeah, no, Press, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. Saturday is going to be great and... You know, this this is a great weekend. Obviously, it's Super Contest weekend for us. It's meet and greet weekend. So they just, you know, for the for wager talk. So it's it's going to be great, man. I I'm I'm very excited. Teddy, back in the day, Lawrence, back in the day, Planet Hollywood, I think it was when it was still uh, they used to they used to host Miss Miss World or Miss Universe or whatever it was. Oh. I was playing in a poker tournament, and the women who were in the contest were one at a time, like walking by with their entourages get it was worth the price of admission <laughs> dude 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 you know you know this story but i stayed at the rio many many years ago and i was a pot smoker at the time and uh, i had nothing to do it was like noon i light up a joint in my room i get a knock on the door i'm like oh my god shit i'm in trouble i look through the peephole Maxim 100 is hosting their Maxim 100 women. Uh, the Rio is hosting Maxim 100 women. Get a knock on the peephole. The most beautiful mulatto girl I've ever seen. She in a bikini. She's like, I'm staying next door. I heard you smoke. I, I smelt the pot. Can I smoke with you? I'm like, sure. The single greatest afternoon of my life. Uh, get some actionable information out of art, please. Art. Uh, let me get some actionable information. Let's start with MLB, uh, today's MLB card, just real quick. Uh, we've gone through it uh, with cappers highlighting some games. What are you seeing behind the counter over the Westgate Superbook in terms of wise guy action today versus public action today on the MLB card? Anything stand out? Yeah, sure, Teddy. You know, qu quick on a couple of the MLB games, some overnight sharp action that came in that moved a couple of numbers. And it's actually a bunch of favorites today. Early game, a game that's going to go off at just after 10 o'clock here, 10 a.m. West Coast time. Royals at Twins. We opened the Twins minus 165. It's now gone all the way up to minus 185. And that's not just public action. That really is more sharp action. Public jumped on it a little late, but the early move off the 165 was on sharp action. Padres at Marlins, same same type of thing. Open the Padres minus 135, now minus 146, so a little bit over a 10 cent move towards the Padres. And then Mets Braves. Mets Braves, you know, that's a Scherzer thing. Obviously, this is, you know, the AL East type of battle. They're both battling for first place. I think it's a three or four game lead now for the Mets. So Mets at Braves, we open the Mets minus 140. We've gotten now to 147. That was early sharp money on the Braves, but also some public money late too. I'm sorry, early money, sharp money on the Mets, and some public money too late on the Mets because, you know, people feeling that not it's a must win for the Mets, but they got their horse on the hill and they should bounce back after a couple tough days in Atlanta for the Mets. And one last MLB question. Considering this Yankees slump, and we've seen teams that have, you know, 600, 650 winning percentages have bad slumps down the stretch. The Dodgers had an ugly September a few years back. The Red Sox had a famous ugly September. And there's tons of money to be made betting against these formerly elite teams that are now slumping. Are you guys taking anti-Yankees money at all? Or are the better still coming in and supporting the Bronx Bombers? Well, usually when it's teams like the Yankees and Dodgers, no matter what's going on and no matter what the price is, the betters are happy to bet on those teams, especially the public. Last night was not the case. We actually did not have a winning night. And obviously when you basically just have Major League Baseball going on, Major League Baseball is, is going to be what carries you know your win or loss for the night. And our biggest loss last night was people betting on the Rays. So people jumped on the Rays last night, and I think there are people, not only sharp bettors, but maybe even some public people are starting to see 
you know, the Yankees are in a bad way right now. So, you know, if I can get plus money with some of these teams, because Yankees are still going to be favored in basically all these games. So people are happy to take the plus money with the Rays and some of these other teams that the Yankees are playing. So it was definitely Rays money last night. Art DeCesar joining us. Art, what's the biggest NFL bet you've taken in the last week? Uh, you know, I, there's nothing that's like crazy. You know, I remember two weeks letting you guys know there was a five figure bet on the chargers to win the super bowl. That's probably still it. the biggest. Yeah. It's probably still the biggest one we've seen in the last couple of weeks. You know, we now have chargers sitting at 10 to one to win the super bowl. we like, we opened them 20 to one and we were just steadily yeah. moving down 18 to one, 16 to one, 14 to one. And then we had to move to the 10 to one off the five figure bet. So I'd still say that's the one, you know, we've had a lot of, win totals and games of the year that have been coming in. But obviously those are always going to be smaller. You're, you're always going to be able to take a five figure type bet on a Super Bowl market. So I've got two more football questions for you, Art, before we let you go. Of course, you can follow Art uh, to see Arthur DeCesar on Twitter at ArtDice21 on Twitter. And you can see him at the Westgate Superbook on Saturday if you come to the meet and greet and hang out with everybody. It's gonna, this is going to be a real party. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you can come down to meet Art. Uh, I believe he will be there at least for a little while. Uh, he'll sure he'll come by and say hi. Two questions. First, college football week zero. That's next week, man. What's coming in? What's the early sharp action for college football? All of a sudden, it's like not down the road. It's right here. Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. I mean, obviously, you know, we're all kind of in preseason mode right now, but the college football – you know, obviously it's going to be a big thing. You know, there's nothing really crazy right now for Week Zero. Week Zero is not like the greatest slate. You don't have the big teams. You don't have the Alabamas of the world and things like that. You know, I guess the best, what, the best game of the week is Nebraska-Northwestern. So that, that's probably your best first game of Week Zero. Um, you know, I know, I think the Illinois game was taking a little bit of Illinois action against Wyoming, but... Nothing of note so far. I think next week we'll probably be able to dive in a little bit, you know, harder on kind of what's been coming in on that because there's more people betting like week one and the games of the year in college football over this week zero because it's not that great of a schedule. Sure, sure. I and mean, the only thing that I saw was the uh, money pouring in against the Nevada Wolfpack. Uh, have you seen that at the uh, Westgate as well? The money's coming for uh, Jerry Kills, New Mexico State Aggies. Honestly, no, nothing that like it really would spark anything. I mean, maybe I maybe I missed it, but it's not anything where I'm like, oh man, that totally like went crazy. Or we're totally like hung out to dry on that. So no, I I don't want to give that out saying like yeah, it's it's been nuts. Not saying that it hasn't moved, but you know, nothing that's been on my radar. Sure, sure. And when it comes else? to NFL preseason week two, real quick, if you can, anything stand out to you in terms of what uh, we've seen for early sharp action? You know, I think week two is going to be the opposite of the week one theme, right? Week one theme yeah. was 17 games, 14 or 15 of them went over. All you've seen this week is under money. I mean, there are multiple games. The game tomorrow, uh, Bears and Seahawks, that's moved three and a half points, 39. It was 42 and a half. On Saturday, you have Lions at Colts from 42 and a half to 39. Bucks, Titans, 41 and a half to 38. And then Sunday, Eagles, 37 now. It was 41 and a half against the Browns. And then that Ravens Cardinals game you talked about, we had 42 and a half. It's now 38 and a half. So I think we were prepared for all the under money that came in, and it has still come in. And I know, like you said in your big game breakdown, some of these that are even are sitting at 38 and a half or 38 could even go down another half a point or a point because it, it just, it's going to be better saying, well, there's no way these overs can keep up. So all the under money has come in, and that's both sharp and public. So I think both. The sharp and the public betters were aware of that. So that's why you've seen these three and four and four and a half point moves. Awesome stuff. Art to Caesar, everyone. You can follow him at Art Dice 21 on Twitter. Uh, our incredible segment. Every Wednesday, you come on here, you give out such great stuff. Uh, Art to Caesar, everyone. Teddy, one of our uh, one of our listeners, Dane, writes, What time is the meet and greet starting? Well, that would be 5 p.m. At the Westgate on Saturday night. Uh, did I get that wrong? No, oh, you can. Uh, you got. I believe it's five to nine on Saturday. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so we uh, did get over 100 um, likes, so let's go. All right, everybody, it's uh, Lawrence Presman. This is the Daily Presidential Address. I went 3 and O oh yesterday, and I got two plays for you guys today. I just also want to mention I had a two-on-one night for my clients yesterday. Uh, my great baseball season continues. I have three client plays up for tonight. Please take advantage of that. And, guys, we do have a promotion going. Uh, you can buy a three-day all-access for any single person at wagertalk.com for only $39. No coupon code required. And you can get that until Sunday. As for your free plays, I like the Toronto Blue Jays over the total tonight. That is Toronto and Baltimore over 8.5. I like it over 9 as well. And... I like the Boston Red Sox on the run line, minus one and a half. I will not be here tomorrow. Marco is stepping in my shoes. I hope to see you guys all at the meet and greet with great love. I can't wait to get there. Teddy, my brother, take us home. Sure. And yeah, no press tomorrow. No show at all on Friday because everyone's going to be here in town. So uh, I, I do it by myself, but the production values won't be there. No big deal at all, but no show on Friday. We'll be back again uh, on Monday. That's going to wrap it for the Wednesday edition of Wager Talk today. We'll do it again tomorrow. Same time, same channel. I want to thank Art to Caesar. I want to thank Adam Trigger and, of course, Steve Merrill for joining us. And you, I want to thank each and every one of you taking time out of your busy day. We appreciate it. Between now and tomorrow's show, enjoy the games and good luck. Are you headed to Las Vegas for the Wager Talk and Sports Memo meet and greet? Well, we want to make your trip easier by discounting our three-day all-access packages to only $39 with no coupon needed. This offer is valid from Wednesday, August 17th through Sunday, August 21st, and is good at both Wager Talk and Sports Memo with no limit to how many handicappers you can lock up for $39 each. So if we're going to see you at the Westgate this weekend or not, enjoy this incredible three-day package special. That's right, get a three-day package from your favorite handicapper for the price of a one-day all-access.